Hey folks, today I'm upgrading my junk drawer server, which you may remember as my secondary server. This is the board that was in it. This is the Supermicro C2G41. It's a G41 chipset, obviously. Um, I ran this with a Pentium Dual Core E5700 in it, which has been a great chip. Four gigs of RAM in there as well. Uh, this board has been absolutely great. It could use some more SATA ports, but other than that, it has been absolutely great. I didn't really want to upgrade this board, to be honest with you, but my hand is being forced by Intel's patching of Spectre. Um, they recently released a list of uh, which chips are getting uh, patched and which aren't, which I will link down in the description. There's a PDF that they released about it. And um, <clears throat> basically... And basically, um, for me, I'm out of luck with Socket 775 stuff because they're not patching that. They are patching, they're not, and what's weird is the, the patching is a bit inconsistent. I could talk about that in a separate video, but the point is that Socket 775 is not being patched. And since this is a server, I, want it, I don't want it vulnerable. So what I'm doing is I'm upgrading this to the same platform that my main server is on, which is... Uh, one of these super micro boards. Um, I can't remember the exact model number. Let's see if I can find it. It's one of these boards. It's a super micro X8 SIL F. The, this board is what my main uh, server runs on, and it's been a very fantastic platform to work with. It's socket 1156, which is being patched against Spectre. Um, and I've basically built a clone of the other machine, in a sense. Um, the RAM configurations are probably going to change over the next couple months, but this is what I have in it for now. It's also four gigabytes of memory. It's four one gig sticks of um, PC3 10600E, which is which are UDIMs. It's unbuffered um, ECC memory, uh, and it's not registered memory like a lot of boards take. So this RAM is a bit odd and hard to find sometimes, uh, but usually that's in the higher capacities. I managed to get these one gig sticks all in a bundle for like fifteen dollars so that at least get the server running i'll probably get some more ram for these later uh... they they really could do with an upgrade in the ram four gigs is enough for what i do but i want there to be some future proofing in place so that's going to happen eventually um, the other nice thing about this board is I've, i have six SATA ports on it now so i'll be able to put six hard drives in here uh... so i might add two more drives to this machine later on probably i probably won't right away but eventually i think i might uh, just for the heck of it. So, uh, just to go over the I.O. again of these boards, you got your PS2 ports, you got a uh, USB, an IPMI Ethernet port there, serial, VGA, two gigabit Ethernet ports. So, pretty simplified, but it gets the job done. There's also a, an internal USB port if you need a boot key or something like that, which is very nice. So, the way this is going to be set up is... Um, I'm just going to plug all my existing hardware into it, which is four two terabyte hard drives, uh, and one SSD is the boot drive. This is this system set up a little bit uh, better than my main server is actually, just because it has that drive. I also have a controller to go with it, so I'm going to use that to boot. I use this to boot the machine, and uh, it does its job. So I still have the Acbell power supplies in here; those haven't given up yet. Uh, when eventually I do get to replacing these, it'll probably be with a Seasonic power supply of some sort or another, maybe a 520 watt, like I, I just replaced in my uh, transfer PC. So let's uh, put this board in and get the show on the road. Uh, there's not going to be a whole lot to see here. It's mostly just talking about what I've done with the hardware. Um, but I'll show it up and running and everything. So... I'm going to assemble this and then uh, we'll boot it up and I'll, uh, I'll show you what I do to make this run. Since it runs on Linux, there's not really much I have to do to this other than mess with some uh, net persistent rules stuff and um, just let it boot into uh, you know the system. Uh, as far as the chip on the board, I think I forgot to mention that. Uh, this Under this Dynatron K17 cooler, uh, I have another Pentium dual core G6950. That's primarily what I run these on because the chips are extremely cheap and easy to find. This chip was $4 on eBay. Um, 
They're not as easy to find as they used to be now, though. I had to really dig for a four-dollar one, but I did manage to find one, and that's what these plat that's the platform I've been using, uh, rather than Xeons, just because the chips are cheap and they do support ECC memory, which is nice about the older Intel platforms. I don't I don't know what I'm going to do with newer Intel platforms. I'm probably going to be forced to use certain chips, or just use AMD platforms. Uh, eventually, because uh, I'm sure a 2200G would do just fine for home servers like I have, but I kind of do like ECC memory, so I'd have to look and see if the AMD chips support ECC memory. If they do, I can use them, so that's me thinking out loud a little bit. Let's actually put this thing together and see it run. Okay, I've got this thing back in, got all the drives plugged in. Uh, sorry about the lawn mowers outside, that's kind of annoying. It's becoming spring as you can hear uh, got this keyboard plugged in to this machine here I got the KVM switched to A and that's going up to my HP monitor my new 1440p monitor still has a VGA connector which is very handy for situations like this where I need to put a head on the server for a minute just to like configure the BIOS which is exactly what I need to do here so that's very handy to have so let's turn this on takes a while to turn on for some reason. Deletes the key I want to hit, so let's wait for the monitor to come up. There it goes. That is VGA on a uh, uh, 1440p display. It looks a bit blurry, doesn't it? <laughs> there, but there you can see the Pentium is in there. It recognizes um, uh, recognizes the RAM. It's running at 1066. Recognizes the UDIMs as it should. Let's see if I can get to the BIOS here. There we go. Oh god, look at these like flickering lines and stuff. VGA on monitors this big is just not great, but it's actually useful for stuff like this, so I commend HP for giving me that option, because I can see enough to configure the BIOS, and all that kind of stuff, so. I want to turn virtualization on. What else do we have here? Uh, whoops. Configure SATA as AHCI. Obviously want AHCI. Why does it say not detected? Seriously, I gotta open this thing up again. But I'll do that after I'm done filming the BIOS. Uh, what else do we need? Boot feature. So we need. Uh, PS2 mouse support, yada yada yada. You can actually turn off the unsupported whatever check. Restore on power loss should be on because it's a server. That's the main thing I wanted here. So let me turn trusted computing off. Okay, it is off. That's good. Now, what about uh, health? Looks like the CPU is running at a nice low temperature with that cooler. Excellent. So we're good. So now what I need to do is select the boot devices. So. Yeah, it wants to boot from one of the Hitachi drives. That's not what I want at all. We're going to make that the Intel SSD. Then I'm going to go and check the hard drive that's not showing up. So, once this reaches the boot screen again, I'm going to shut it off. Hold that down until it shuts off. There. Now I'll check that drive, and we'll make sure it boots. Okay, I had to fiddle with some SATA cables, uh, stuff that Intel SSD was not showing up for whatever reason, and now it is. So, that JMicron uh, card that I have in there is working again, and that's what the SSD boots off of. So, I've set, I've gone through a little bit more of the BIOS and said a few things, so. Let's boot and see if I can get in here. All right. That boots pretty fast. And it sees the Intel SSD there. 
Now it should go to a Debian screen. And it does. Excellent. Let's see if it boots. Yep, we've got an extremely large login screen. Now you may be asking me, why do you have a why do you have a head on the server? Uh, because I needed to configure crash plan and I and the uh, X to and the uh, what's it called? Uh, is it called X to go? Not X to go. Um, but it's a way to run uh, Xorg applications over SSH. I didn't want to deal with that at the time. And uh, everything I was reading about getting crash plan to run over the network was like a real hodgepodge of crazy stuff. So what I'm going to do here is log in to the XFCE desktop here. And there's you can see crash plan for business. That's the only reason I have a head on this. Or at least a, uh, something like this. I could really I could really do with not having a desktop environment on here at all just because it would free up memory. But... Let's uh let's check the network and make sure this is working. So I need to delete the net persistent rules. So let me find that command real quick. Okay, here's what I need to check. Here's what I need to delete the persistent net rules. I tend to delete these whenever I change boards. So we also want to go to ADC slash hosts. So we also want to look at hosts. Looks like it's all good here. Alright, I don't have to change that. We're good. So now I just need to do a sudo reboot. So you know what, I'm going to do a pseudo power off. And I'm going to call this server good. So, yeah, that's the server all set up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, turn that back on and use it. And I'll update you guys on what I have done with the, uh, I'll briefly update you on you guys on what I've done with the transfer PC as well. So, turn that KVM switch to the other computer, turn this on, and just leave it there to do whatever. There, I can just leave it alone, and it'll boot now. So, sir, the junk drawer server is back up, and that's good, because that's the one that's used a lot. So, this is the transfer PC, and as you can see, it has a different cooler in here now. This is the cooler that was in the um, the junk drawer server before. I decided to upgrade uh, the cooler in this while I'm at it to a little bit of a quieter one. And since this is a Core 2 quad, it really needed a better cooler than that mass cool cooler anyway. So now it has the copper on the bottom and it's all nice. So I did that to the transfer PC. I thought I'd mention that briefly just at the end of this video, just to show you where the cooler that used to be on that socket 775 board went. It, I decided to move it over to here a place where it will be utilized a lot more. So, cool stuff. So, that's that was been a video on uh, upgrading the server to a platform that's actually being patched for Spectre. Uh, that was the whole reason I did that to that particular platform. And, uh, I think I'm going to be very happy with it. Seems to be running swimmingly so far. Uh, there's not much you can say. I mean, the board just runs. So, now both of my uh, servers here actually have server grade hardware in them. Yeah, excellent. Uh, both of these are going to get some RAM upgrades uh, at some point in the future, but I don't think that's really worth making a video of because how often have you seen somebody install RAM? <laughs> but uh, yeah, I thought I'd mention that these are probably going to get some RAM upgrades later on. Uh, probably 8 gigs in this one. I don't know how much in this one. Uh, that one's going to get two more hard drives as well, two more 2 terabyte hard drives. So. I'll have a little bit more storage in there eventually as well. That's not going to happen for quite a while though, because I've got other things to take care of in life right now. So, that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video, and have a good one everybody. Ciao.